In this video, the goal is to solve for the output voltage V0 and the current supplied by the op amp I0. The given circuit is a modified version of a non-inverting op amp amplifier. The input is applied at the positive pin of the op amp. There is negative feedback. In the feedback path, we have a ladder network of resistors. We will solve the circuit using ideal op amp assumption. This assumption states that when negative feedback is present, the input voltages at the op amp input pins denoted by V plus and V minus become equal. Also the input currents to the op amp pins denoted by I plus and I minus are zero. In other words, under negative feedback, the op amp internal circuitry works in such a way that the output voltage attains a value needed to force V plus equal to V minus and the currents I plus and I minus to be zero. There are two main ways to solve this circuit. In this video, we will see both approaches in action. The first approach is based on deriving a general expression for the output voltage in terms of input voltage and resistors. To do this, we ignore the values of the components. We use the ideal op amp assumption in conjunction with node voltage method. Node voltage method is covered in other videos in this channel. A link is provided at the end of this video. Let us write the equations for this circuit. The voltage at the positive pin of the op amp V plus is equal to V in. This is because the input voltage is directly connected to the positive pin of the op amp. Applying the ideal op amp assumption V minus is equal to V plus and since V plus is equal to V in V minus is equal to V in. This means that the voltage at this node, which is connected to the negative pin of the op amp, is V in. We mark the voltage at this intermediate node as Vx, and this is all one node where the voltage is V0. Let us apply Kirchhoff current law to these two nodes. We assume all branch currents are flowing away from the nodes. Applying Ohm's law to the resistors, for this node, we get this branch current is V in minus zero over R1. And this second branch current is V in minus Vx over R2. And since I minus the third branch current is zero, we get this is equal to zero. Moving on to node X, this branch current is voltage on this side minus voltage on this side divided by resistance. So we get Vx minus V in over R2. This branch current is Vx minus zero over R4 and this third branch current is Vx minus V0 over R3 and this is equal to zero. Now we have two equations and two unknowns Vx and V out and we can solve them to get the solution. We can symbolically solve the equations using Mathematica. Using the solve command, we can solve the first equation to get the intermediate node voltage Vx. Using the eliminate command, we can eliminate Vx from these two equations and this gives the output voltage in terms of V in and resistors.
we can verify the solution by solving by hand. We can show that we get the same answers for Vx and V0. Please pause the video now if you wish to study the solution in more detail. We can see that the output voltage is independent of the load resistor. Also the output voltage does not depend on the internal voltage gain of the op amp. These are two important consequences of using the ideal op amp assumption. Using the derived expressions, we can now substitute values and get the answers. Thus Vx comes out to be 0.6 volt and V0 comes out to be 1.65 volts. We can see that this circuit is effectively providing a positive gain of 8.25 and this gain is controlled by the value of the resistors. Using the values of Vx and V0, we can now solve for I0 by applying Kirchhoff current law to this node. So we assume all branch currents are flowing away from the node and we have three branch currents at this node. Applying KCL at this node, this branch current is minus I0. This branch current is V0 minus 0 over 10K and this branch current is V0 minus Vx over 3k and this is equal to 0. From this equation I0 is given by V0 over 10k plus V0 minus Vx over 3k. Substituting values we have V0 is 1.65 over 10k plus 1.65 minus 0.6 over 3k and this comes to 515 microamps. Thus we have solved for V0 and I0 using approach 1. Let us look at approach Let us look at approach 2. Under this approach we just apply ideal op amp assumption and solve the circuit directly using node voltage method. At the positive pin of the op amp, V plus is equal to V in. At the negative pin of the op amp, using the ideal op amp assumption, V minus is equal to V plus is equal to V in. Thus voltage at this node is V in. Now we need to write Kirchhoff current law at these three nodes. So let's start with this node. Assume all branch currents are flowing away from the node. Applying Kirchhoff current law at this node, we get V in minus 0 over 1k plus V in minus Vx over 2k. This is equal to 0. Next, moving on to this node, we have three branch currents here and applying KCL gives Vx minus V in over 1k plus Vx minus 0 over 4k and this last branch current is Vx minus V0 over 3k and this is equal to 0. At this node we again have three branch currents so we can mark them as flowing away from the node and applying KCL gives this branch current is minus I0, this branch current is V0 minus 0 over 1k and this last branch current is V0 minus Vx over 3k and this is equal to 0. 
These circuit equations can be easily manipulated and converted to standard matrix form as shown here. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this in more detail. We can solve the equations using any means. For instance, we can use the NumPy package in Python to solve the equations. If you wish to use Python, please follow the steps as shown here. Using Python, we can see that Vx comes out 0.6 volts, V0 comes out 1.65 volts, and I0 comes out 5.15 into 10 raised power minus 4, which is the same as 515 microamps as before. So this confirms the solution. We can verify the solution using PSPICE. This is the same circuit constructed in PSPICE. Let's simulate and look at the bias voltages. We can see that the voltage at the positive pin of the op amp is 200 millivolts, which is equal to the voltage at the negative pin. Vx comes out 600.17 millivolts which is quite close to 0.6 volts that we calculated. Similarly, output voltage is 1.651 volts, which is quite close to 1.65 volts that we calculated. We can also look at the currents. We can see that the input currents are around 80 nanoamps. Under ideal op-amp assumption, we assume them to be zero. The output current is minus 515.18 microamps. I can click here and this shows that PSPICE has calculated this current as going into the op amp. This is the reason for the negative sign here. Overall, we can see that the analysis using ideal op amp assumption gives fairly accurate results for the given op amp circuit with negative feedback. Finally, let us compare the two solution approaches. Both approaches rely on ideal op amp assumption and use node voltage method. Approach 2 is a quick and efficient method to get a specific solution for a given circuit especially if using a computer program to solve. The first approach provides a general solution. It provides more insight into the circuit as it explicitly relates the input voltage to the output voltage and the resistor values.